is Dr. Holt. This video is on potential energy graphs and stability. It is important to know that the negative and derivative of potential energy in respect to x will give you your force. And that can be in any direction, whether it's in the x direction, the y direction, and the z direction. To illustrate this, if I take this mass here, which is attached to the spring, and this is, I'm setting this as my equilibrium point. And if I push back on this spring, I've, in, I've increased the potential energy in the spring. Now, if I start decreasing the potential energy, that the force is going to go back into the positive direction. So as, as this is decreasing the potential energy, again, the force goes back positive. So if I negate the derivative of that, then I will get the force same way in this position here is if this, I pull this out and hold this mass attached to the spring I've given it potential energy so it has positive potential energy but then if I if I push it if I l release it the force will pull it back the force will always take it back try to take it back to the equilibrium point which decreases the potential energy and that is why you get the negative value to illustrate this with um, potential energy graphs. Here I have a potential energy in the vertical axis and I have my position in the horizontal axis and this being in meters and this being in joules. Here I have an object at rest at x initial and it has so much energy here of potential energy. The maximum energy and I put a just like a mass here just a ball. The maximum energy that this can have at any point in time is going to be this many joules. Now I can slide along here and if I do that obviously I'm reducing the potential energy. And I'll talk about that in the next slide. But the total energy will remain constant in the absence of work done and that's work done by non-conservative forces. So in this I can reduce the potential energy but as I reduce the potential energy as I move it along here if I had this much maximum potential energy to start out with, then it will be changed to kinetic energy and I will illustrate that. Now these points here where I cross at the maximum energy line and the potential energy graph are called turning points here. This is where I'm going to have the maximum potential energy and my kinetic energy here will be zero. If I take the ball that was given at this point it had this much potential energy and I brought it down to this point here now my potential energy has been reduced to say u1 value however the total energy would stay the same so I've increased the kinetic energy and this is just like a roller coaster if I give it so much potential energy when I come down to here this potential energy will convert to kinetic energy so the total energy again of the system will stay the same as long as there's no work being done by non-conservative forces Now here I want to determine the magnitude and the direction of the conservative force acting on the object. And this kind of goes back to what we talked about earlier in the earlier slide about the derivatives. At this point in time, I, this is my equal, this is like my equilibrium point. We'll talk about these in, in the next couple of slides too, this being the equilibrium point. If the object is pulled back here and it has so much potential energy that as I move it this way I'm going to decrease so as I move it from here to here I'm going to decrease the force will always point back toward the equilibrium point so in this case the force is going to want to pull it back toward the equilibrium point as I go back to another position let's go over to x3 position and in this case come down here and look at this object here I have given it potential energy, it's working its way back up here. The force is going to go back down. The force again is trying to, to keep it back toward the equilibrium point. So the force will always point back toward the equilibrium. To determine where the object is in equilibrium within a potential energy graph, all you need to do in this case is look to see where you have zero slope. At these positions, x1, x4 and x5 I will have the object being in, in equilibrium and by finding that obviously I could take the derivative of the potential energy graph or potential energy function set that equal to zero and determine when the slope is equal to zero that will locate 
the positions where the object is in equilibrium. Now you have different types of equilibrium. At position x1 and x5, you state that the system is going to be in what's called stable equilibrium, meaning that if I had a mass here, I say I had a ball, I'll change it, make it solid here real quick. That if I try to move it away from the equilibrium point, it's always going to want to be moving back toward the equilibrium point. The forces in this case are always going to try to pull it back from equilibrium. Same way if I'm over in this position. If I move it into here, again, it's still going to want to move back toward the equilibrium point. So x1 and x5 are called stable equilibrium points. Now x4, which is this position here, is, is called an unstable equilibrium state, meaning that if I would locate it back to here, that the forces are going to try to pull it back toward down the curve. Same way over here, if I move this down to this area here, it's going to want to move away from the equilibrium point. These are called unstable equilibrium points. And you can also consider that as like local maxes, local mins here. And it has to do with concavity, obviously. When you're concave up, you're going to, in this point, you're going to be at a stable equilibrium. When you're concave down, you're going to be at an unstable equilibrium point. Now, the other one you, he, you read about is called the neutral equilibrium state. A nuclear, neutral equilibrium state would be where you take the second derivative and it's set at equal zero and you have no concavity. In a position like this, this object is wanting to stay along here. It's going, right? It's not going to want to roll back down. So when you have the second derivative is equal to zero and you have no concavity, those are called neutral equilibrium states. And I will illustrate that here, and then I think it's the next slide. If I have a, like a bar here serving like a pendulum, and I move it to a different position, move it to a different angle, that it's always going to want to rotate back to this position no matter what. As I move it up to here, it's always going to want to go back to this position. This is called stable equilibrium. Where you have an unstable equilibrium is where you have, say, a a bar, but it's hinged now at the lower end. Now, if I could hold it right exactly at the, at, at the vertical position and everything was perfectly balanced, it would stay in that position. But if I just touched it, let's say touched it and pushed it a little bit that way, it's going to fall away. Same way if I push it this way, it's going to want to fall away. Those are called unstable equilibrium points. Neutral equilibrium is where you have a bar, but now you have pinned it in the middle. So now I can locate this at all these different positions, all different angles, and it would stay in those positions if everything was perfectly balanced. This is called neutral equilibrium. I want to work uh, one problem here, and I think this will hopefully kind of clarify how to set up these problems when you're given a potential energy. Now here I'm giving the potential energy is 6x squared minus 6x cubed. And I want to find out the force associated with the potential energy. So again, just go back and remember that du over dx, if you negate that, you will get the force. So first thing I will do is I will negate this and then I will take the derivative. So the negative of the u of x would equal to negative 6x squared plus 7x cubed. I would take the derivative of that in respect to x, and I will be able to attain my force. So my force would equal to minus 12x plus 21x squared. And that would be my force equation. I could determine what the force would, would be at any value of x. B says, assuming no other forces act on the object, at what position is this in object in equilibrium? Again, I come back to my energy equation, and I have u of x is equal to 6x squared minus 7x cubed. I will take the derivative of that and set that equal to 0. So du over dx, in this case, is going to be 12x minus 
21x squared. And again, I will set that equal to zero. In this case, I will pull out greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor would be 3x here. That's going to leave me 4 here minus 7x here. And again, I set that equal to zero. So first thing I'm going to do is set each, each one of these equal to zero. I will do the 3x first. And I will say 3x is equal to zero. I will divide by 3. So when I divide by 3, x is equal to zero. Okay, so that's going to be one of my critical points here. I take this one, and I will solve now. Solve it by setting it equal to zero. You get four minus seven x is equal to zero. I move seven x over to the right side. Seven x is equal to four. I will divide both sides by seven. So four over seven is equal to x. I'll circle that in red. So now, there's my critical point. So these are my two critical points. So this is where equilibrium will occur. To determine whether it's going to be stable or unstable, I'm going to go back and I'm going to take the second derivative of this equation or the first derivative of this one. And I'll just take the derivative of this one. And when I do that, that's going to give me 12 minus 42x. And that's what over dx squared. That is what that value there is going to be. That's my second derivative. I will take my critical points. I will put those back into the second derivative. When I put 0 back into here, I'm going to get a positive number here. Okay, so that means it's going to be concave up. I will take 4 sevenths and put that into here. When I do that, I put 42 times 4 over 7. Obviously, I can take 42 divided by 7. That gives me 6. That gives me negative 24. I'm going to get a negative number there. So when I get a negative number here, I know then I'm going to be concave down. So I know right now when x is equal to negative 4 over 7, I'm going to have unstable equilibrium. When x is equal to 0, I'm going to get stable equilibrium. So again, it all just goes back to the second derivative and establishing concavity. As always, hope this video was useful and I wish you the best of luck as you continue working more physics problems.